Welcome to Silver Pros, sponsored by SD Bullion. I am your host, Silver Dragons. I'm joined by my co-host, Yankee Stacking. What's up, Yankee? Hey, Dragons. Great to be here. Absolutely. We are also joined by James Anderson, the content director for SD Bullion, uh, our sponsor. And he has authored a whole bunch of stuff, uh, gold and silver guides. Uh, he's been featured on the History Channel, Zero Hedge, which I love, uh, Gold Eagle, Silver Seek, Value Walk, and a bunch of other places. So how you doing, James? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. We're actually talking about uh, silver spot price, manipulation, premiums, all that kind of stuff. James, I'm going to just try to be frank here. I think there's this feeling that it's all manipulated, whether it be... Um, high frequency commodities trading or, uh, you know, the use of derivatives like naked shorting, which is illegal, James, uh, that type of thing. The COMEX maybe leasing the physical silver out. There's all kinds of accusations and some of it's been true. I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, uh, fines been levied because of trading manipulation. I- I'm just trying to have you speak to this. Help us wade through it, the whole manipulation around spot price, around the COMEX. What is real, what is legit, and what is overblown? Uh, So one of the the smoking gun pieces of evidence was was the fact in the 1970s when we went off the gold standard. Obviously, we started in 1970. I think gold was around 40 bucks an ounce. And by 1975, it was around 200 an ounce. And the powers that be at the time were freaking out. The U.S. Treasury ran over to uh, the uh, the London market, which was essentially the biggest uh, gold market and still large gold markets to this day. But at the time, they were the ones that were mainly the uh, the price discovery producers. And they discussed, you know, how to get this under control. Essentially, you had U.S. Treasury agents go over there and discuss with the heads of the biggest desks in the London gold market. And what they prescribed to the U.S. Treasury agents was to create an outsized futures market uh, that you could then use the outsized levers to dictate price uh, over the physical market. And so that's effectively what they did. They started the 1975, they started COMEX Gold Futures Trading. At the same time, the fake regulator, the CFTC, kicked in at the same time. And they've been around and they've been working hand in glove and looking the other way for so long. They actually helped out in the Hunt Brothers fiasco to more or less scapegoat the Hunt Brothers. And then, you know, at the same time, gold went down and we moved along in a fiat financialization from there. But the the point is that that is a verifiable fact. It's a it's a it's a cable, literal cable that was intercepted uh, from the U.S. Treasury uh, to the U.S. Treasury from London. And I think WikiLeaks found that. So, you, you know, you start off. With, you're born in inequity. You're born in, in a place of sin, in a place of fake price discovery, rig markets. And so to think that from that inception, that today with sophistication of algorithms and all the other things that goes on, to think that that's not still going on, you'd have to be a naive child. And so for anyone who denies it and doesn't understand it, I, I you know, I, to understand it's very difficult because, you, you know, there's millions of things going on that influences it. But the fact is the system is set up to favor paper financial assets because in the United States, it's a big reason why we are as powerful as we are. Uh, Our financial markets are are very, very powerful. And as an empire, we'd like to keep it that way. So that's more or less the large scope of why it's happened and systematically why that's gone on for so long. Just so that people understand that what I'm talking about naked shorting, it's not that we don't have any clothes on, but the, the ones shorting don't have any silver backing up what they're trying to sell so they're selling what isn't there or at least what may not be there uh for them to 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 get so that is illegal all right and the popular story says that the fed itself is using bullion banks as its agents to put these naked silver shorts right on the comex to drive the price of silver down is that is that happening is are they essentially trying to protect the u.s dollar by enabling these banks to repurchase the silver at a lower price are they gaming it so in 1975 that was the exact point i mean the point was we had literally gone off the old you know pseudo bretton woods system and the dollar was legitimately looking terrible uh Mm -hmm. and we were very concerned about uh 
our power and influence around the world. And at that point, we had already started the petrodollar. And so how are we going to keep Saudi Arabia happy if we're making them use our dollar, right? We have to keep the dollar strong one way or another, you know, whether it be by force or happy. And so when by the time 1975 kicked off with the uh, Comex gold derivatives, silver or gold was around 200 bucks, it had it went down to 100. And, mm. you know, I, I've, been, I've interviewed, uh, I believe it's Michael Cooper, I believe he's out there. He does a lot of videos on silver and such. But he told me, you know, he was trading in the pits at the time. And he told me what that was like in, in an interview I did a couple of years back with him. But, yeah, I mean, the, the point is the fiat the currency looks to the authorities and to the world looks cheap if gold is climbing walls. And they failed at this. I mean, they did. They failed. By 1977, 78, the market turned around and they lost control. And it went up to 850 an ounce. And at that time, 850 an ounce meant that all the gold – Official reserves that the United States had at the time uh, were worth more than the ba- the monetary base. We could have gone on back on a full fledged gold standard if we politically wanted to for like two years. And so, yeah, I mean, essentially that's where we are. Gold is a political uh, piece of money. I mean, it, it's the best money, it, you know, in terms of you know, silver is great money as well. It's the, it's the people's money, but gold is a very important uh, barometer to what's going on financially. And so, the government. Uh, it's not like they give the directive to the to the banks on a piece of letterhead. Okay, it's they want to control, they want power, they want to keep their power and to wield it around the world, uh, and they have their reasonings for doing that. The banks uh, also want to make money and they want to make bonuses, and so it's this weird hand and glove that fit together, and it's not a formal agreement. It's just more or less the way the system has evolved. So uh, what I want to ask you is, uh, so we know that there's manipulation uh, with silver. Um, the paper to silver ratio is about 340 to 1. We know there's manipulation with gold. Uh, the paper to gold ratio about 111 to 1. Uh, but when we look at silver specifically, it seems to be manipulated more. And, you know, I know we talked about, okay, who's benefiting? I guess the dollar, absolutely. But is there anyone else benefiting from silver price being low? For example, uh, big tech, you know, Tesla needs, what, 30 million ounces of silver, et cetera. Are there any other people who would want to keep silver price down? Sure. Uh, People who produce it, uh, like, for instance, all the trophies that you see, like uh, in the NFL, what's the, you know, the NFL Lombardi trophy? Yeah. You know, that, that's made by the, that expensive uh, jewelry company with the blue box. I forget the name of them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in, in 1980, when the Hunt brothers got scapegoated uh, in the New York Times, they ran an ad more or less publicly shaming the fact that, uh, you know, someone tried to rig silver prices higher. That's what they shamed them in the New York Times. And that's a documented fact. I put that in articles before. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, some producers in silver don't want, ever want to see silver go high because it's their input costs. If you make silver jewelry and trophies and stuff, it's more expensive than it costs. And you'd like to, and they, they put huge profit margins on their silver products. And, and so they, they want to keep that spread as wide as possible and to be able to sell in high volumes. And so, yeah, it, for certain for certain interests to have a cheap podunk uh, silver price is in their best interest. But that's that's only a minor amount of the, of the market. I mean, industrial usage most of the time is, a scant amount of silver that's used in products. And so even if the price doubles, triples, quadruples, it's not going to make that big a deal or a difference in the end users in cost, right? The the final cost of it. So it's, it's more of an elastic uh, demand situation for most industrial inputs. Mm -hmm. There are some of them where the interest uh, would be uh, not to their advantage if silver went through the roof. So if Elon Musk decided to take a bunch of delivery in order to uh, make his electric cars, <laughs> would that that would be a massive hit to the COMEX, no? Sure. Uh, but, you know, you have to be careful. Like I said, politically, if someone ever did that, and you, you saw what the Hunt brothers did, and the American mm-hmm. government will make examples of people to show other billionaires what not to do. And if you ever go back and listen to Warren Buffett in 1997, 1998, the way he talked at the Berkshire Hathaway meetings, he gave an eloquent description explanation of his valuation uh, for silver and why Berkshire Hathaway at the time went long silver 129 million ounces I believe something mm-hmm. along that lines 127 million ounces uh, and it was a not a huge swath of the Berkshire 
pathway uh, portfolio. But if you pay attention to the way he talks and that, he's very careful about the way he talks. And he was very careful in the sense of not trying to go off the impression that he was, you know, a hunt brother, essentially. That he was doing it for evaluation play, for a long-term play. He wasn't trying to drive the market, et cetera. And so that, that fear exists. It's a real thing. And so for someone like Elon Musk or something like that, what they would do is they would just go and make direct uh, direct agreements with some of the largest miners and refiners in the world and get it directly that way. Uh, so I don't necessarily believe you would see a situation maybe you could but if things really get crazy where, where all of a sudden industrial users are going and taking massive piles out of the comics i think what what's going to drive the silver out of the comics most part is going to be investment investors high retail yeah. retail investors retail or... slowly but surely but in the okay. ultimately the big tidal wave is the high net worth investor there you go yep. you know overall it, it seems like this wave uh, of manipulation mm -hmm. um it, will it end at some point so manipulations with outsized leverage, they go two ways. And people don't know their history and they don't maybe do the research, but I, I know of at least one instance in US history where an outsized derivative market in the United States exploded the price of gold. And it was right after the Civil War, there was this thing called the Gold Room in New York. And they were more or less the price discovery market for gold in the United States. And at the time, if you know your history, you know about the greenback and the fact that, um, you know, before they were using hard hard coin and specie gold silver payment and then during the civil war they used the greenback and people were really concerned about the greenback and it going to zero essentially and so it was late 1860s 1868 1869 there was congressional hearings and testimony and i have documents that prove some of the things that were written and said and they're long testimonial documents they're like 100 pages plus but there's a stanza in it where the guy describes phantom gold and he describes how phantom gold worked. And what you had was a situation where you had outsized derivative traders running around the room, uh, getting orders from their, their bosses. They were the brokers in the room. And a lot of the people, were, you know, there's supposedly a conspiracy uh, of people going long, trying to corner the gold market at the time. But ultimately it was the outsized derivative longs that pushed the price of gold uh, almost eightfold. And gold for ever was $20.67 an ounce. And in 1869, it got to $160, right? And so the idea that this manipulation to the downside goes on forever is erroneous. It can go the other way as well. And when it does, it goes up walls extremely quickly. And, and it's not just this slow bleeding that we've kind of had to suffer through as, as bullion bulls for you know a decade or so. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an exponential climb, a manic climb, straight up a, a wall. And, you know, and then people turn around and start scapegoating and pointing fingers and saying, you know, this or that. But ultimately, the reason this is going to happen again, probably, is because you're going to have a, con a, a crisis in confidence in store values, whether that's the fiat currency itself or other, other asset classes. Ultimately, you're going to have a drive toward the physical market. And that's what's going to change things. It's a combination of physical market, uh, creating massive shortages for any price of any large size of silver or gold that's available for immediate delivery um, at a reasonable price anywhere near spot. Good luck in, in, in a situation like that. And then the other side is the leverage longs. The momentum traders who will come in on the long side who are looking to make a quick buck will just blow away the shorts at the time. Do you think triple digits is likely this decade? In Fiat Federal Reserve notes, for sure. Wow. Oh, man. Well, I guess on that, um, you know, we, we got to say, Thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, James Anderson. Thank you, everyone, for watching uh, Silver Pros. Don't forget to stack like a pro.